The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Welcome to Generations Radio, where the focus is on our seniors and their families. We are here each Saturday afternoon from 5 until 6 p.m., bringing you resourceful information with our radio team of professionals in the field of aging. Stay with us for the next one hour as we explore different ways to make life more exciting and meaningful for our extraordinary seniors. Right here on AM 690, The Answer. And now, here is our host and the publisher of Generations Magazine, Percy Ihara. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Generations Magazine. This is Percy Ihara. Uh, in the studio today, I have been away for uh, several shows and been very busy with a lot of issues going on in aging. So thank you. I did want to thank uh, Scott Spelina, the prosecuting attorney for elder abuse at the prosecutor's office, Scott Spelina. He did several shows. Uh, the ladies, uh, Hope Young from Kokua Care and Cynthia Arnold from Senior Boob Managers and Declutter Hawaii. So thank you, ladies and Scott. Um, you guys had some great stories, great shows, and I appreciate it very much for filling in. Um, anyway, this is Generations Radio, um, very similar to the Generations Magazine, as you guys know. And so please, if you've not seen the, the magazine or first time listening to the radio show, you can go to our website, generations808.com, and click on that, and you'll find all the resources there. And also, you, please uh, like our Facebook page, Generations Magazine. So we'll be putting out... Um, uh, little post uh, every week about the dip coming up topics, uh, events if we have them. Uh, we're going to put in several articles um, uh, every every week, so please uh, stay tuned for that. But anyway, um, this is the one week time before our tenth annual Aging in Place workshop, and uh, it's hard to believe it's been ten years. And uh, you know, God bless him. As you guys know, Kirk Matthews has passed away. He's a good friend of mine, and um. And it's even hard to say, but he was the first person I called when we had this idea uh, to put this show on and uh, the workshop. And, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, always in my heart. And it's still a little hard to talk about. But um, anyway, uh, this is our 10th year doing it. It's been uh, 10 fast years. And this is your... It'll probably be even bigger as every year gets bigger. Um, last year, we had, I believe, over 15, 1,600 people. So if you're listening to this show um, this weekend, next Saturday, August 20th, at the Alamon Hotel, we have our 10th Annual Aging in Place Workshop. It's from 8.30 to 2.30, and I know you seniors will be there early, there early so um, please don't mind the exhibitors setting up and the presenters setting up, but it's, we start at 8.30. Um, it is first come, first serve, seating-wise. Uh, no reservations required, and uh, really, it's um, it's a great resource um, workshop um, day because we have 18 different workshops in the morning, and then we replay them in the afternoon. So we have six different rooms going on. So what we're doing today is very unique in that um, everybody's got busy schedules, so we're going to have several people call in to explain their workshop workshop they're putting on. We'll give you a whole list of workshops on our website, generations808.com, but um, we have we did get one in, in the studio in person. So um, Amber from uh, Carden Outreach, welcome to the show, Amber. Hey, Percy, thanks for having us. I'm glad somebody came in the <laughs> studio. I know everybody's busy and right. everybody's hard to get out of the office, and you know you're on you're on the internet and and your emails all day long. So thank you very much. So Amber, give us a little bit of background of yourself, what you do with Carden Outreach, and then then eventually going to. Um, what your workshop's going to be about. Sure, sure. So my name is Amber Kanoa, and I am the Community Outreach Case Manager at Cardin Outreach. Uh, Cardin Outreach has been doing Medicaid eligibility in Hawaii since about 1998. And what we do is we help families through the Medicaid long-term care application process. So this includes doing the consultations, completing the application. We help gather the verification documents that maybe the family doesn't have or needs assistance getting. We work to find them placement and even follow up with the Medicaid office to see what the completion is of the application. So you guys do Medicaid planning, and um, so you so when, is this for MedQuest and Medicaid long-term care, or just for long-term care? Well, 
primarily we're contracted with the um, with the hospitals to do their Medicaid processing. But what we're going to go and talk about is the private pay long-term application for people who are in the community that haven't been associated with the hospital. Oh, I see. Yes. So more so the long-term care side then. Absolutely, okay. yes. But I mean, is it that difficult? It's a long <laughs> process. It's that's a lot a, of a loaded paperwork. Question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, everybody's situation is very different. So some people may have a lot of assets and it be a complicated um, application or have no assets and it's really straightforward. But the process is still the same. We're still going through the same amount of time and the same amount of work. And when you say same amount of time, what kind of time frame are we looking at? We're looking at about a three to six month process. Wow, that's a long time. It is. But we usually try to meet with the family prior to them being eligible and under that asset limit so that we can plan with them the spend down process and guide them all the way through until Medicaid is able to approve. So you say three to six months process. Is that from the time the application goes into the Department of Health? Yes. But we usually meet with the family about a month prior right. just so that we can set everything up and everything is going to MedQuest in a timely manner so we can get it approved as quickly as possible. And MedQuest goes to the Department of Health? Yes. And their office, is that the one in Kapolei or do they have one in They town have now? one in Kapolei and at Dillingham, right um, near the Costco Ivalei is where the other building is. Right, right, right. So, I mean, when a family contacts you, what's the, the simple... And we're going to cover all this in, in your workshop, right? Absolutely. We're going to be covering this um, on Saturday, August 20th at Alamoan Hotel for the Aging in Place yeah. um, event. And you will be speaking uh, from 9, 9.30 to 10.15 yes. in the Elima room. And then you're going to replay that, do it again at 12.45 to 1.30 uh, in the Elima room that afternoon. So are you going to be speaking or is mostly going to be Cassandra Stewart? Well, we'll be Cassandra in giving the presentation, but I will be outside answering questions to people who have questions before or after. Or maybe they need clarification on the guidelines. Um, the best thing for people to do who are coming is to come prepared with questions. Come with questions that maybe you've heard or you want to know about barriers or solutions to barriers just so we can guide you through those answers. Right. Because it is kind of complicated. And if you've never been through that process, you wouldn't know what to ask anyway. Absolutely. But I'm sure your workshop's going to cover a lot of common questions that people have, right? Yeah. So we're going to talk about the rules, the Medicaid long-term rules, any kind of barriers. We'll talk about spend down and what the money that you have and the assets that you have, what it can be spent down on. Yeah. I, I love what you guys do because you're so knowledgeable. I know Cassandra used to work at Department of Health. Yes. Yes, she did. So that's very good. And so... That there's an application process that they have to actually fill out a long list, um, long several pages of application, right? Correct. It's like 27 pages oh, or something. It's a lot that, of I pages. Didn't, I didn't think that much. <laughs> really? Yes. So do you actually sit down with the family, help them fill it out? Well, what I do is we'll consult first, look at where we stand as far as when we're going to be eligible. Once we find out this is the date of eligibility for the patient, I actually sit with the family, fill the entire thing out with them just so that I know that the answers are answered correctly or mm -hmm. that we're doing the correct processes. And can you do that online or is it actually a hard copy paper and pencil? For the long term, because there are so many forms and there's so much documents that need to be um, completed, it mm -hmm. is a paper application. So it's not something you could do online. Wow. You're scaring me, Amber. <laughs> well, that's why we're here. That's why this uh, event is so awesome is because we can tell people about how we're able to help and, you know, answer any questions maybe that they have about maybe they only think that they're not eligible because someone said you wouldn't qualify. But that's right. what we're there for. And everybody's situation is different. Um, depends on where they talk to them because the Medicaid rules, rules did change um, actually several years ago, right? Right. Correct. Um, but also the asset limit went up, the home asset, right? Isn't it 800 Yes, I believe it's at eight hundred and fifteen or eight hundred and twenty-five thousand. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, that's net went. equity, though. Yes. So less the mortgage if there's a mortgage balance, and you know I've had Medicaid people tell them, yeah, if you get a reverse mortgage or a regular mortgage, you just minus it off the top of the value. Mm -hmm. As long as that net amount is less than I think eight fifteen, eight twenty-five, then they're good to go. So, yes, absolutely. Right. But again, if those are some of the questions that you have, please bring it, Cassandra, and I would love to answer any of your questions that you have. Yeah. So what are, the, what are some of the common questions, though, can I ask? Um, biggest one is about the home. When it comes to talking about the trust and can the home be in a trust? And if it's out of a trust, will they put the lien? And 
what situations would they not put a lien? That's that's the biggest question mm. that a lot of families have. Yeah, because nobody wants that lien put on a property, right? If, absolutely. Nobody wants that. And so, you know, I've had several cases recent last you know, two or three months where they had to ask those questions. I know I've called you and Cassandra. So what, is, you know, I mean, I'm not going to hold you to it because you will have to the workshop they're going to put on next Saturday. But so you can, your property can or cannot be in a trust. The property cannot be in a trust. Any kind of trust? Revocable or irrevocable? Uh, Medicaid will look at a trust as a trust, irrevocable or revocable. A trust is a trust. Um, but there are certain situations where when the trust is not on the home that the MedQuest will not put a lien on the home. Try that again. <laughs> <laughs> so we remove the trust on the home so that MedQuest is able to put a lien. So puts it on their own name. Yes. Okay. But there are situations in the family or in the household when MedQuest will not put the lien even though the trust is removed. Right. Like when there's a spouse in the spouse house. Spouse in the house. Or there's an adult child that's been taking care of the patient for over two years in the house. Right. Or a disabled child that's been living in the house for right. two years. So, but I heard people putting in an, in an irrevocable trust and that saying that a state doesn't put liens on properties that are irrevocable trusts because technically the, the senior does not, does not own it. Well, from rulings that I've been accustomed to is that a trust is a trust. Mm -hmm. We need to remove it regardless if it's irrevocable or revocable. Yeah, because I've heard that many times they put that in an irrevocable trust and then the Medicaid does not qualify them. Yes. Because, uh, and, and some, they qualified, and I don't know how many years ago it was, mm -hmm. but, you know, Medicaid does put liens on irrevocable trusts. I've, I've heard them. Yes. Right? Absolutely. So there, there are situations, but again, if, if you want more information, I would love to meet with any yeah. of the, the clients and elaborate on top of their situations. Yeah. So um, are, you, are you allowed to tell me what you guys charge for your services? Sure. So consultations are free, so we can meet and talk with anybody. Um, our services is 950 plus tax, so it comes out to 992.75. It's a flat rate. It doesn't increase annually or anything. It's just one flat rate. And does that guarantee them getting approved by for Medicaid? Well, for Cardin Outreach, what we do is we set up the consultation to see whether or not they're eligible. If the patient is eligible for services, we'll go through with the process as long as they want to. So whether they get approved or not would be based on just getting the paperwork done. It mm. usually is a guarantee that we're going to get it mm. approved. Okay. Wow, you're so knowledgeable. You're so young. I don't know how you got so knowledgeable. But I had a question what recently asked me, and I and I, and I didn't. I don't think I called you, but let's say dad goes on Medicaid mm -hmm. and he has to move out of the home. Because a lot of people don't know this when they when they do their Medicaid planning that you're not allowed to stay in the home. Right, you are not allowed to stay in the home. I mean, there's some um, what, what what the old days we called it nurses without walls. They would come in like once, twice, three times a week for only an hour to check up, but it's right. not really Medicaid care. Well, it wouldn't be covered under the long-term care. Right. Medicaid long-term care is for patients who are in the foster home or in a nursing home right. facility. Yes. And so let's say uh, dad goes on Medicaid because my clients right now, she's, um, dad's on Medicaid. Uh, he got qualified and then mom needs care. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Can she go on Medicaid too? She can. It is very possible. Um, when one person goes into a Medicaid facility and the other person is in the community, um, still in the community at home, mm -hmm. the asset limit is considered as one. And that's when it's that $119,000. Right. But if both parents need to be put into a home, the assets need to be spent down and they would be considered two separate single individuals. So that's both need to be two, under $2,000. $2, yeah. So that's the only stipulation? Yes. So they both could be, but then at that point, they would be looked at as single applications and 2000 um, is their barrier for both of them. And um, they wouldn't put a lien on their property? Well, at that point, nobody is going to be living in the home, right? So right. if dad goes, mom is still at home in the home, no lien. But now mom goes, now that that is going to be a lien that they're going to put because nobody's living there that's, unless there's an adult child that's, that's been taken right. care. So. That's right. So it would just depend on the situation. Oh, gosh. Amber, you're so smart. I, I'm still, I mean, I, I always call you anyway, but right. you know that. But um, anyway, so we're looking forward to you guys next Saturday. Yes. You guys are speaking from uh, 9, 930 to 1015 uh, in the Elima room. 
And then you're we speaking again from 12.45 to 1.30 in the Lima Room in the afternoon on August 20th. And there's no reservations. You can just walk in. But if you're listening to this show here the week before the August 20th, um, please come early uh, because I know the Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security are just totally full, right, every year the every same year. way. So so amazing. Such an amazing event that, that you host. So we're so thankful that you're able to host something like this so people get that information that they really need. Yeah, very, very important. So anyway, Amber, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And listen, you have a good weekend, and we'll see you next Saturday. All right. Thanks, Percy. Okay. All right. So anyway, we, um, Amber is just one of the speakers. It's Cardin Outreach, where we talk about Medicaid. But in that same room, we're going to have uh, Medicare with Martha Klopin, our Medicare expert in the magazine, and also Jane Yamamoto Barigse, who's with the Social Security Administration. We're talking about Social Security. So though that room is usually very, very full. Uh, you guys want to come early. Um, and sometimes people stay in the room all day because, uh, you know, I know there's six rooms going on at one time, but these are the three major topics. Um, and it's very important that uh, you get all the information. But you guys, will, Amber, you guys will have handouts, right? Yes, we'll be there with handouts. And I'll be outside for anybody that has questions maybe right. in between. Um, maybe just answer personal questions if they have anything. Okay. So, Amber, thank you very much. Listen, have a great weekend. All right. Thanks, okay. Percy. All right. I don't want to, I know you got to go back to work. But anyway, so yes, August 20th, um, the 10th annual Aging in Place workshop, uh, Saturday uh, at the Alamona Hotel. No reservations required. And I've had several of you call me. Do I need to make reservations? No, absolutely not. Come and go as you please. It is, it is, gets very full. The rooms are first come, first serve. Um, and, you know, we switch out every hour. So we have six rooms going on. We will have over 65 exhibitors in the hibiscus room. And then uh, in the big room, the uh, hibiscus room two, we will be in that room. Um, our long-term care expert, uh, long-term care insurance expert, Michael Yee with Ameriprise Financial. I'll be speaking in that room about aging in place and using your home to stay at home. And also Mr. Stephen Yim, who is also a contributing writer to Generations Magazine, he's an estate planning attorney. Um, that room is, that's the big room. We'll have about 150 to 160 seats in that room. So look at that, look for that room if you're really looking at financial legal information. So, but anyway, uh, in the Carnation room, we will have uh, very important topics as well. Cynthia Arnold will be talking about decluttering and aging in place. We're going to have Hope Young talking about where do we go from here. In other words, um, when you need care, uh, wh who do you call? Um, do you call companies that, that, that will do home care? Do you call companies that you're going to go into a retirement facility or you go to a skilled facility or your retirement facility? So Hope will cover all those topics. Uh, she's with Kukua cool Care. Uh, the last one will be uh, Senior Living Options. Uh, Danny Hara, my younger brother with Keller Williams. He'll be talking about all the different facilities, uh, retirement facilities, skilled facilities. Um, and I believe he's been covering some of the estimated costs as well. So do you buy into a, a facility or do you rent it by, by month? And he'll cover all those options, and including most importantly, what do you get for that monthly fee? So it's very, very important. That's also one of the more well-attended events, um, uh, workshops, because there aren't too many people that know all the different facilities, which he certainly does. So um, look, for, look out for that. So we start at 8.30 in the morning, and every 45 minutes we'll change out a speaker. Um, so what you want to do is go online to generations808.com, click on the, um, the events uh, resource tab. It actually might even be on a calendar, and uh, there'll be a drop-down menu, and it'll have that spreadsheet. Uh, we will be handing out a, a flyer of all the all the workshops that Saturday morning. So look around for volunteers because they will have the flyers. And you want to pick and choose which rooms you want to go to. Now, like I said, there's six rooms. So there's a hibiscus room, carnation room, pakalana room, plumeria room, ilima room, garden of lanai. So um, let's go to the Garden of Lanai. Garden of Lanai room is sponsored by AARP. So thank you very much to uh, Jackie and Barbara Kim Stanton and Bruce Patorf there at AARP. They do a great job. And their room is going to have six different speakers. So at the, the first speaker at 8.30 to 9.15 will have home modifications by Kurt Kuriu, uh CK Independent Living Builders. What they do is they actually are a contractor. And they will actually work with the family to modify the home, whether they need to lower or raise the, the, the 
countertop, uh, the toilet seat, put in um, grab bars in the um, bathroom. A lot of times people now are doing bathroom where they can just roll in a wheelchair so there's no lip. Um, but lighting, things like that. So Kurt's an expert in that, and he is a CAPS member, Certified Aging in Place Specialist. So he's been trained on how to modify homes the best way for people that are uh, we want to re remain independent but might have some uh, mobility issues. Up at 8, 9.30 to 10.15, we're going to have Prepare to Care. Patricia uh, Bemis with, um, is a registered nurse. We'll talk about um, types of care, things that you're going to need for care when you need to care for somebody. Uh, a lot of times when you get discharged from the hospital, your family really, really needs to know what kind of care you're going to need, what kind of bandages you're going to need, what kind of medications, who's going to perform that, um, uh, administer the medications, um, and help you plan that out. So it's prepare to care. The 1030 to 11.15 in this Garden Lanai room uh, for AARP will be uh, Lori Protzman. Uh, she's a registered nurse as well, and she'll be talking about advanced care planning. And that's more of covering a medical directive, your post, if you're not familiar with that new term, it's been around for a couple of years. Physicians, I, I forget now too, myself, P-O-L-S-T. Physicians Order for Life-Sustaining Treatment. It's a long one, but cool acronym, POST, P-O-L-S-T. And she'll be talking about the end-of-life options, um, the planning for advanced care, uh, down the road, um, and some of the documents you need to have. So Lori's uh, done a very good job at that, and I believe she's over at Queens. Um, as you know, we'll have over 65 exhibitors, and that during the mid -break, midday break at 11.15, we'll have a, a break where you can go and see the exhibitors, um, and then we come back at 11.45. ARP has that Garden Lanai room at 11.45. Actually, Jackie Bolin, we're talking about Reboot Your Life, uh, it's called Life Reimagined. So Life Reimagined is a cool initiative by ARP to really look at life. Some of you may have been retired early, but still are restless and want to go back to work or want to find different careers. Uh, maybe you were laid off um, and just kind of re-engaging life again from a different viewpoint. And because when people retire at 60 or 65, the new thinking is now you're going to be retired for for 30, 30 plus years. So you really need to think that out. And that's the new statistics now. So she'll talk about how to reboot the life. Uh, different, I'm sure she going to talk about different case stories or examples of stories of people that re, you know, reconfigured their life and changed around their passions, uh, changed around their, their initiatives. And a lot of people want to volunteer as well. So she'll be talking about that. Uh, at 1245 to 130, we have, uh, for you uh, techies out there that are, that are still um, with it, uh, we're going to have social media and certain and apps. Basically, we have two experts, Ryan Ozawa. He's a local um, um, expert in social media and, and all kind of um, internet apps. And then Bert Lum will be talking about the different things that seniors can use online on your smartphone. But... Um, I don't know if Ryan's going to remember. I met him, gosh, about uh, 12 years ago at an event. And he was a tech guy. Um, and he was helping with the computers. And this is before iPads and before smartphones. And he was knowledgeable then. So he's a cool guy. If you like techie stuff, social media apps, you might want to check him out because he knows them all. And that's at 1245 to 1, to 1.30. The last um, speaker of the day for um, ARP's Garden Lanai Room will be uh, improve your cybersecurity. So a lot of people um, are afraid to go online, afraid to use email, afraid to even turn on a computer because they're going to get a, they're going to get some kind of um, some kind of uh, worm or Trojan horse or some kind of virus online. <clears throat> Chris Duque from the Honolulu Department of the Prosecuting Attorney Office will be uh, talking about inter improving your cybersecurity. Do we have a, one of our guest speakers? And who is this now coming in? Is this Mr. Michael Yi? Hello, Michael. Michael, are you there? Hey, Percy. This is Mike. Hey, uh, Michael. So anyway, for you guys listening to the radio show today, Michael Yi, our long-term care insurance expert and financial advisor with Ameriprise Financial. Mike, thanks for calling in. I know you've got a busy schedule as well. 
but give our audience a little taste about what you'll be talking about at your workshop next Saturday. Thanks, Christy. There's, um, there's a crisis going on right now where uh, a lot of people living longer lives and uh, many families are finding themselves today taking care of aging parents, taking care of them in long-term care. And a lot of these people taking care of their parents are boomers. And the leading edge of the boomers is 70 years old. In about 10 years, they're going to find themselves needing care themselves. And what the boomers and the parents are also having to deal with beyond the caregiving is the cost of caregiving. And so what I'm going to be talking about is uh, how we take care of people and uh, find what are the funding options for taking care of long-term care families. And so, but I mean, yeah, I mean, can you give a basic statistic about the cost of long-term care, Mike? To, to give you an idea, um, there was one study I saw where uh, a private room in a nursing home today in Hawaii is 145000 a year. So if the average time that a person needs care is three years, that's 435000 and uh, poor people uh, can't afford that. They have to depend on the social safety net. Maybe the ultra-wealthy can afford that without altering their retirement. But for the vast majority of middle and upper income, uh, that's a lot of money. And that could affect the family's retirement. It could affect the legacy. It could mean the difference between families staying together and falling apart. Yeah, I know, Michael, you probably sell the most long-term care insurance in Hawaii. and You're one of my experts in that field, but it is happening every day, isn't it? It's happening every day, and it's happening more frequently today than I've ever seen in my 34-year career. It's uh, family and friends. You talk to anybody, and they know somebody that is taking care of somebody. And it's not just the physical side and the emotional side. There's a financial component. And caregivers, especially if we don't plan, are having to give up their financial dreams, their sanity. Uh, you need a circle of care. And the way to do it is to, to understand how to finance long-term care. Yeah, it's going to be a crisis. We've been calling it the silent tsunami for many years. Uh, I don't think it's silent anymore as more and more families. I, I can't remember the figure. I think it was 186,000 people are caring for somebody in Hawaii. Um, that figure is only going to go up. Um, I've seen people come to the Aging in Place workshop. I remember talking to a guy one time who was 80 years old in a walker. And I said, sir, can I help you? And what kind of information were you looking for? And he stunned me. He goes, you know what? I'm uh, they're still taking care of my dad, and I need looking for information about caregiving. And this guy's in a walker. And he's about 80 years old. I said, you're caring for your dad? And he said this. He says, nobody else is around to take care of him but me. So amazing. And so every year we see 70, 80-year-old people taking care of their loved ones still yet. Um, because healthy, being healthy is great, but that means you're going to live a long time, and you're not going to die right away. So it's the blunt truth. Um, so if you're listening today, Michael speaks from 8.30 to 9.15 in the big hibiscus room, and he'll replay his, his presentation at 11.45 to 12.30 in the hibiscus room. This is all next Saturday, August 20th. So, Michael, any last words? We're going to take a short break, but any words of wisdom before to get people to come to listen to you? People, uh, I find, that who are proactive in life who are intentional, are more likely to live life on their terms than people that don't. In short, the people who plan are going to be more successful at solving long-term care, protecting their retirement, protecting their family legacy, and keeping their relationships. Yeah, it's so important. You just set it on the nail, on the on the hammer on the nail. It's really about keeping your relationship, keeping the family together, because it's a family affair. Uh, I was talking Absolutely. to somebody the other day that, that the father has Alzheimer's for 10 years. Can you imagine caregiving for somebody for 10 years? 
I mean, it's just amazing. So anyway, Michael, thank you. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you August 20th. Uh, at, at the Almon Hotel, from, and you speak at 8.30 to 9.15 and 11.45 to 12.30 uh, in the afternoon. So thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Percy. Thanks for all you do, and aloha. Aloha. So anyway, we want to go take a short break. Uh, we'll be right back in about oh, four or five minutes. Okay? Aloha. from Generations Radio. If you have any questions or want to be part of our discussion, give us a call at 296-5467. That's 296-5467. This is Generations Radio on AM690, The Answer. Did you know 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it? The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. She too was surviving kidney disease, and she showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. Now you know. Moon Physical Therapy is here to help you back to recovery. Moon Physical Therapy is located on Ward Avenue across from Sports Authority. Physician prescribed for motor vehicle accidents, workman's comp, or that body pain that comes from rushing to play without warming up. Also event cardiopulmonary rehabilitation with our one-on-one -on -one patient care. Moon's Aqua Therapy heated endless pool allows for low impact exercise with less pain on land. We will give you the right exercises to get you back to health. Ask your doctor to prescribe Moon Physical Therapy. Moon Physical Therapy. We achieve results. Aloha. This is Martha Clopin. And Al Harrington. Choosing the right Medicare plan not only saves you money, it also helps you avoid headaches and heartaches down the road. We want to remind everyone to listen to a Medicare moment with Martha. Sundays from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. as we help answer important questions on Medicare so you can stay healthy, wealthy, and wise all year long. Call me at 543-2073. 543-2073. I was an addict from the age of 13. I finally decided it was time for a change. I walked into the Salvation Army Adult Rehabilitation Center, and that got me ready for the real world. Now, I choose to be guided by Jesus Christ, and today, I'm building a powerful and promising future, free from drugs and alcohol. Please shop at the Salvation Army Family Stores. With our discounted sales, your support through your purchase helps men live a clean, sober, and productive life. Got Vegas on your mind? Get Vacations Hawaii on the line. Vacations Hawaii offers weekly four- and five-night Honolulu to Vegas packages, which include three meals daily from $6.99. Stay at Hawaii's favorite casinos, California, Fremont, Main Street Station, and Orleans Hotel. Vacations Hawaii will get you there in comfort on deluxe wide-body 767 planes with complimentary in-flight hot meal service. Vacations Hawaii's frequent flyer program gives you future travel discounts and credits. So if you're ready to win big, call Vacations Hawaii at 591-4777 or visit pointvacationshawaii.com. Today, more than ever, we local people are living longer than any other state in the union with more seniors, baby boomers, and caregivers. Generations Radio promotes the importance to be proactive as we all age. The radio team will focus on issues facing our seniors and their families, finding resources to navigate healthy aging along with financial, legal, and caregiving information. So join Percy E. Howard from 5 until 6 each Saturday, right here on AM 690, The Answer. Focusing on the issues facing our seniors and their families today. Here's our Generations Radio host, Percy Ihara. Welcome back to Generations Radio. I'm Percy here uh, every weekend. Well, not every weekend. Last month I wasn't around because thanks to Scott Spilina, prosecuting attorney Scott Spilina from the prosecutor's office, and um, the ladies, Hope Young from Kokua Care, and Cynthia Arnold from Declutter Hawaii and Senior Wu Manager. So, Anyway, we're here talking about the 10th Annual Aging in Place Workshop at the Alamo Hotel next Saturday, August 20th from 8.30 to 2.30. No reservations required. Um, come and go as you please. Um, uh, you 
park at the hotel, uh, shopping center or the hotel. There is a validation, but it's, be a, it's still a small fee for, for the validation. Um, and we're going to be there all day from 8.30 to 2.30. So anyway, today what we're doing, if you're just tuning in, we're having different of our presenters calling in to talk to us about their workshop they're doing this week, uh, next week. So next we have in Pamela Ani from the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, good afternoon, Pamela. How are you? Hi. Are you there, Miss Pamela? I'm I'm here. So Pamela, you're with the Alzheimer's Association and you'll be speaking in the Plumeria room from eight thirty yes. to eight thirty to nine fifteen. And then you, we will replay you'll play that again at eleven forty five to twelve thirty. You'll be talking again. But you're gonna be talking about the ten warning signs of Alzheimer's. Yes. I didn't realize there's ten warning signs. I thought it was just memory. Well, you know, one of the things that we do know that as we get older, our memory changes, but when that memory loss begins to disrupt what would be our normal or our daily life routine, it's at that point that it's not a typical part of aging. And then we begin to see symptoms of dementia or memory loss. And dementia just simply means it's a slow decline in memory, thinking, reasoning skills. But the most common form of dementia is Alzheimer's, which is a fatal disorder that does result in the loss of brain cells and functions. But uh, it really helps to have a list so that you can differentiate between what would be normal aging process and warning signs of Alzheimer's. Yeah, that's so important, and it's really important to get the family involved as well, right? Oh, most definitely, because uh, it, it, it's amazing how that uh, three people from the same family unit can actually come out with three different perspectives, and uh, it has a lot to do also with a lot of the family dynamics, and so... Um, Somebody who's had a closer relationship with mom may not recognize that there are some pretty serious changes being made with mom because they're in their Cocoa Pops 24-7. They're just whatever she is, she is, as opposed to someone else in the family who may not be as close to mom and perhaps even in a, uh, they may even be miles away from her. In addition to relationship-wise, they may be miles living away from her, so only see her every three to six months, and in so doing, seeing a huge change that the one who is with her constantly may not see. So it's really important the family gets together and that they all talk about, especially when there is a concern with our seniors. Yeah, it's so true, but you mentioned that family dynamics, uh, every family is different. Um, I've never seen a family the same, uh, how they cope with and deal with the stress and pressure of, of caregiving. Uh, no. when you have some kids live on the mainland, some kids living here, um, it just, it just very difficult time. And, and even a, uh, a more appealing reason why we should try to get that diagnosis as soon as possible, because we do need to get everyone on the same page as far as saying, okay, uh, this is more serious than we thought. Uh, yes, it does look like we're leaning towards Alzheimer's. Or perhaps it's a, another disease that is being diagnosed that is bringing on the Alzheimer's. And so then once you have all the family on board, it's a lot easier to make those major decisions that do need to be made by the family unit because that early diagnosis has been made most definitely. Right. And not, not that we don't want to scare people, but... You know, there's what, 25, 26, 27,000 people in Hawaii with Alzheimer's or dementia-related diseases? You know, um, let's see, let me, let me bring it a little closer to home. Right now, it is one out of every seven individuals above the age of 65 that has been diagnosed with the Alzheimer's disease. And it is on a huge, rapid growth pattern to the point where it appears that within the next eight years, it'll be one out of every three of us above the age of 65 that will be diagnosed with the Alzheimer's disease if we can't find a cure very soon. 
Well, I don't think they're going to find a cure in eight years because there's nothing that stops us, it slows it uh, down, right? You know, uh, we got to keep hoping for miracles, though, don't we? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> well, you're the miracle for most families. I'll tell you, Pamela, I've known you for several years, uh, and your workshops that you put on, uh, you're, you, mean, you have a lot of firsthand experience dealing with families, and it must be very difficult trying to trying to talk to these families about this this disease, and it's it's a terrible disease. Um, I think that something you alluded to just uh, a few seconds ago, and that is when you talk about getting the family on board. I think one of the biggest challenges that does occur is that when you do have those certain family members who are not ready to deal with it. They're not ready to face it. So there is a denial. And that denial can look, it, it can come in all different colors. <laughs> it, it has different perspectives to it. But we all have a different ways and unique ways of which we express denial of something. But it's, it's just really hard when the family members are not accepting, okay, this is the diagnosis. This is what we have to work with. But once we can get everybody on that page, then it makes it easier for the whole family, including the patient themselves, to deal with the disease. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've seen families where they have attorneys in their family, they have doctors, but they're not gerontologists or don't deal with seniors uh, in the family, and they really don't understand the seriousness of a disease, the seriousness of, uh, of how to take care of the care, how to coordinate the care, yeah. what kind of care they're going to need, and unless you have experience as a nurse or dealing with seniors, they don't really know as much as they should. And, and you know, I, I think that that is where also there has to be the ability, again, to accept the diagnosis so that you can go in with an open heart and an open mind and be willing to sit down with someone who can say, this is what the disease looks like. This is what the stages look like. And in the disease itself, uh, this is the need that is going to, that needs to be met for the patient. And uh, so then you end up, you know, being able to project and saying, okay, we're going to expect the best, but the worst case scenarios, we want to be prepared for them as well. So we get our resources together. If mom never has to be placed or if dad needs to be put into a, uh, um, a perhaps a, um, a medical uh, place where he has also medical needs that needs to be taken care of, that can be done because now we've done our homework and we know the best place to put him. So all of this early preparation, just it, it, it's, it's urgent that it is taken care of, most definitely. Yeah, absolutely, Pamela. So we, we were with Pamela Ani from the Alzheimer's Association. Pamela will be speaking at the Aging in Place workshop next Saturday, and she'll be speaking in the Plumeria, Plumeria room. room at 8.30 mm -hmm. to 9.15, and then they'll be replaying that workshop from 11.45 to 12.30. So, Pamela, thank you so much, and thank you again oh, for, so for being our presenter there uh, for, uh, for oh, next thank Saturday. thank you. And then Percy also be bringing a, a couple of boxes, and I've got a little wagon that I've already started putting together where I can bring in brochures and lists of resources that would be out on a table that anybody who may need to come in and pull out some of those resources are more than welcome to grab and take them. Great. And I think you, are you going to be printing out your list of workshop um, times and dates that you're, and locations that you do your, I, your support group I meetings? I have. Done, I've done that already. I've got the list of the classes, the list of the support groups, and then also uh, some of the lectures that would be taking place in the near future. Okay, great. I appreciate it. Thanks, Pamela. Yeah. Listen, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday. Thank you. Aloha. Take care now. Mm -hmm. Bye -bye. Aloha. Bye-bye. So, yeah, when you're coming to the workshop, if you're dealing with a family member that has Alzheimer's or just needs care, um, that's what we do. You know, we're going to have um, speakers talking about senior living options, Options for facilities, but specifically um, retirement retirement places. We'll be talking about decluttering your home because you can't move out if it's all a mess uh, and how you clean up that mess. Uh, we'll be talking about what kind of caregiving do you do need if you want to stay in your home. Um, how do you choose a caregiver? So all that is in this workshop. Um, and so 
uh, we're waiting for our next caller to call in and presenter to call in. But anyway, so don't forget you to like us on our Facebook page, Generations Magazine, and also go to our website. Uh, probably in about the next month, our website will have a little contest where we're going to ask you to, to join a, a team to survey our website so we know what works, what doesn't work, what do you want to see, what do you don't see, uh, and things that you do like on our website so we can make that better for you. Um, we're also going to have a new column. Um, the August-September issue is out with the California Hotel on the cover. Uh, we will have a new um, column by uh, Rona Adams, who is a actually is a cool lady. She um, was a nurse during Vietnam. You know, ever saw that movie MASH? Well, she was that nurse in that show. But, I mean, that's what she did. She's not the actress. But, anyway, she was a nurse in Vietnam and uh, is a great resource for veteran benefits and services and programs in the state of Hawaii. Every week she sent me something. So, I said, you know what, Rona, you need to put a, together a column. So, working with our editor, Catherine um, Smith, well, she'll be uh, doing a column and just talking about the various resources for you veterans out there. Uh, because in August, September, we will have a cover story of four veterans from the Vietnam, Korean War, World War II. Um, there'll be four veterans on the cover. Actually, Rona will be one of them talking about um, their service, uh, talking about um, how much this country means to them and all the, the great um, stories of, of serving our country. So look out for that. But anyway, the August, September issue is out. You'll also see that at the senior fair, uh, that the senior fair this year is the last, always the last weekend in September. And that is uh, September 23rd, 24th, 25th. And if you haven't heard by now, the ambassador to the senior fair is uh, your, for yours truly, Percy Ihara. I know when they called me, uh, Mike Rosell, the producer, said, we want you as an ambassador. I said, Mike, I'm not a senior. So anyway, she goes, he goes, you, but you do the most for seniors and you know what's going on and you bring so many people to the workshop, to the senior fair. I said, let me think about it. So when I called him back the following week, he goes, if you say no, I have 20 reasons why you need to say yes. So I said, okay, I don't go through the 20 reasons why I need to be the senior fair ambassador. So anyway, so I will be the ambassador. I will be opening up the senior fair uh, September 23rd, I believe 845 in the morning. We will be posting uh, every day about half an hour um, presentation on the big stage about different things that are important for you seniors out there um, to stay healthy, to plan for long-term care, plan for caregiving. And so it's really important to me uh, for, as being the ambassador of the senior fair to really um, get that out to you. So it is, uh, I believe it was 845 to um, 430 Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that's September 23rd, 24th, and 25th. So um, look out for that. Um, but anyway, next Saturday. So remember now, no reservations required. Come early because the seats fill up very, very fast. Uh, you can email us, percy at generations808.com. Um, if you have any questions, you can give us a call at 234-3117. I know a lot of you have been calling us every day about different questions. But I did want to spend this time um, of the show to talk about our sponsors. Um, we couldn't have done this, of course, with Kirk Matthews because he was the first person I called 10 years ago to start this going. Um uh, and, uh, you know, we, I miss them so much. But anyway, um, KI TV has stepped up to the plate and they have their new Aging Well segment every Saturday morning. So check that out. Every Saturday morning, we bring to you a story about seniors, uh, resources, programs, events, people. And it's a great little venue uh, every Saturday morning, about 745. So every week's a different topic. They also post it on their website, kitv.com. And look on the top right side, there's a, there's a little icon, uh, words uh, tab for Aging Well. So they can pull down the current one and also the um, past um, Aging Well segments. Um, Mr. Stephen Yim, attorney at law, is one of our sponsors uh, and presenters. Michael Yi from Not Ho'o Kelly, financial advisory team. Uh, Kalakawa Gardens, Steve Nawahini there uh, on Kalakawa Avenue. That's a great facility, guys. If you want to look at an option, check them out. Um, ARP Hawaii, 
Uh, we have Vacations Hawaii. And by the way, guys, I didn't mention earlier, we are giving away a Las Vegas package. Um, uh, get to Insurance, Martha Clopin, Keller Williams, Cardin Outreach, Declutter Hawaii, and Kokua Care. Anyway, we have our one of our other presenters calling in now. And who do we have, Miss Leo? We have Stan Michaels. Mr. Stan Michaels, how are you, my friend? Very well, Percy. Nice to call. Nice to call in. Thank you. Yeah. So, Stan, you'll be talking in the uh, Plumeria room, sponsored by Martha Clopin, and you'll be talking about fall prevention. I, you know, Mike, Mike, Stan, I love your topic. Aging isn't for sissies. So, tell our <laughs> tell our audience here what what you're going to be talking about in your workshop. Well, in a nutshell, uh, you know, falling isn't necessarily funny. But aging is sometimes if you if you look at it. Um, there's so many aspects of growing old that uh, every senior understands, and every senior has to deal with. And I'm just trying to put a little bit of a light-hearted bent on it, so that uh, we realize that we can do something about it. We have to take personal responsibility for uh, for some of our aging issues, and that means staying in shape and eating right and sleeping right and uh, just basic health issues, as well as trying to keep our home a safe place. And so you know, I have a little fun with it. Yeah, and it's, and it's preventable. Yeah, it is. That's the biggest key of fall prevention. It is preventable. Uh, it's just the simplicity. I call it the millisecond of inattention. It just takes <laughs> a fraction of a second to take your eye away from where you're doing, and uh, you're on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Now, are you going to be showing some of your um, videos and promos on uh, fall prevention that you did on KH1? Yeah, I've got that opportunity. Uh, I don't, don't, don't think we have time for the KHON piece because it's 50 minutes long, but um, I will be showing a couple of, of short clips from the educational stuff we've done. Well, if you want, uh, Stan, we can put that during the midday break if you want to. Yeah, I, I'm more hour. than happy. I'll make it available. I think I put the other things in the mail to you, and right. uh, I'll bring the other one if you'd like. Right. Give us one of the more important tips, um, Stan. Because we have to close up the show, presumably. but give us a one tip that you can help us uh, right now uh, from fall prevention. Uh, you know, there's a couple quickies. First, keep an eye on your meds because if you mix them with the uh, over-the-counter stuff, it can make you dizzy. Make sure your eyes are good and stay active. You got to stay active and keep your muscles trimmed because if the muscles aren't in a little bit of tune, uh, they don't lose. They lose their capability to keep you in balance. And balance is the key to fall. So stay active. That's number one. Great, Stan. Uh, so anyway, Stan will be speaking in the Plumeria room from uh, 930 to 1015. And you'll be coming back in the afternoon from 1245 to 130. Stan Michaels, my friend, thank you very much. And we'll Thanks see you very much Saturday. for the time, Percy. We'll see you on Saturday. Aloha. Aloha. So yeah, uh, so don't forget, uh, next Saturday, August 20th, 830 to 230, come early. Alamon Hotel, no reservations required. Just come and go as you please. We will have a flyer there to hand out of the six different breakout rooms we have. We have over 65 exhibitors. Or go to aging and um, go to our Generations 808 website and look on our calendar, and there will be a pop up of the flyer of all the different workshops. So we have 18 different worksh workshops in the morning, and we'll have them again in the afternoon. So, anyway, if you have any questions, Percy at generations808.com. Or give us a call at 234-3117. So it's next Saturday, August 20th. So anyway, everybody, uh, don't forget to like our Facebook page. Uh, don't forget to go to our website. Like I said, in about another month, we're going to have a survey contest where if you fill out a survey, you'll be winning a little probably gift card of some sort. But um, check us out at generation808.com. We did revamp our website. So we wanted some input from you guys that go to our website every month. But uh, check out the um, Generations this August, September issue uh, featuring the California Hotel on the cover as well as the Senior Fair, which is this, the last Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in uh, September. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll listen to you uh, next week and aloha and live well. Mm -hmm.